I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. And I'm April, sex toy maven, VP of Hot Octopus, and I've dedicated my life to the business of sex. We're two people with a passion for educating and inspiring shame-free conversations about sex and relationships. Welcome Welcome to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to ShamelessSex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, go to purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a Pleasure Podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Shameless Sex Podcast. If you are listening on the day this drops, it's the day after what day, Chip? Vulva day. Vulva day. My favorite day of the year. What if that's what it was, celebrating the vulva? Vagina day. I think a lot more people celebrate. Or actually, some people wouldn't, too. Vision day. It's the day of visioning visioning what kind of sex toys you want and what kind of vulvas you want or don't want. So all of the above. Have you noticed how large my boobs are right now? Why are they so large? I'm not sure. People are like, uh, Prego? Uh, Absolutely not. You can't just end it with that. I don't know. I think I probably, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting close to my... The Maybe. It says, I don't know. But I just wanted to see if you noticed. You didn't. I did not, know. All right, so never mind. Let's scratch that from the record. All right, scratch that. April size. They're beautiful. Thanks. By the way, she usually doesn't wear a bra, everyone. In fact, never. I never do unless I work out. Yeah, and um, they always look stunning. And I wish you were topless more. I'm actually serious about I'm all not this topless things. P.S. right now. I know, and she's never topless enough for me. For I guess liking. I should have asked you that before we started recording about the boobs, but I just wanted to see. We could do an on-air, a sh- a airing, a showing. A before of, and after? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like maybe they get bigger as we record or smaller or they stay just, just right. right. All right, anyways, this episode is with Dr. Patty Britton. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Britton, clinical sexologist, world-renowned as the pioneer of the profession of sex coaching. I won't tell the whole story, but I read her book many years ago and she's a phenomenal speaker and she shares a lot about common issues that happen in intimacy and relationships whether it's sex or relationship stuff communication but she also talks about how to become a sex and relationship coach a little bit about the journey there and she shared some really interesting points it's not that we've never interviewed a sex and relationship coach before but she said some things i was like thank you for saying that like we haven't really gone there so it was really good she was very insightful and i've said that before I had not uh, experienced her work before this this interview and really love her approach to yeah. not only coaching, because not everyone out there is going to want to be a coach for sex and relationships, but I don't know. I, I, I think that you're all going to enjoy this episode, whether you're a person that's in a relationship, monogamous, non-monogamous, single, uh, whatever you are, you're going to you're going to enjoy this episode. She's beautiful and she's retiring soon too so Mm. now's the time to get her well she's wow she's hot she's gonna be hot forever though i think yeah she's wonderful all right so um before we dive into a sex question so valentine's day uh we've done episodes on valentine's day and it can be a heavy day for a lot of people it can be a wonderful day for a lot of people i have zero plans for valentine's day we're recording this a week before i have i've actually literally given zero thoughts other than the masturbation i want to do maybe or (laughs) the orgasms i want to have um a lot of people think of it though as a holiday i'm doing air quotes literally this time um for sex toys and pleasure and if you are someone who didn't get the sex toy that you want you can give it to yourself or maybe you can still get it for your lover and uh you can also get them at my uh, mother daughter owned sex shop with my mom hey janus also known as janice uh pure pleasure shop reminds you anus right yes that's why i was she's a visual person too she's like damn it i know so purepleasureshop.com use coupon code shameless sex to get 15 percent off Uh, and one shout out i wanted to give to a product because we always talk about the mystic wand or sorry the magic wand so like the hitachi the old school hitachi was kind of big yeah Uh, but i still dig the mystic wand which i said you've given me one before and it's the battery operated version half the size gets the job done if you run out of batteries you replace it so you don't have to worry about charging it it's half the price as well it's tiny and you don't have a baseball bat between your legs which is sometimes a little frustrating but it's magic wand totally it's still super powerful and i know april your go-to still is to to plug it on in and i don't i I mean i still love the magic it's a pain in the ass to plug it in though i will say 
it's plug not it convenient. In, plug it. Oh, you know what I got myself for Valentine's Day? What'd you get yourself? We're not sponsored by them or anything, but a pie from the milk bar in New York City. I I ordered it. They deliver you it. You can come over and eat some with me. I was just what? thinking about that. I, I ordered it. Two I have weeks plans ago. for Valentine's Day now. Yay! So come over. It is literally like the most addicting and i'm not that's good self-love thank you yeah i'm not gonna eat the whole thing i just wanted i crave that i I, the last time i had it was a couple of years ago and just a nice little treat that you never get yourself when you have birthday cake at a birthday party if you like and if you don't like sweets something savory but i thought that it was genius it's like 80 dollars for this fucking pie but i was like that much no i think that's beautiful and i'm totally coming over yeah and then you can use your mystic wand after oh together no sandwich. I don't want to see it. Mystic Wand sandwich. Then it would destroy the, my feelings about. It looks you like as a microphone. It's not unusual. I know you like when I sing on here. I really do. <laughs> um, we also, just so you know, if you continue to listen, we'll talk about like a kitten. If you have, continue to listen, <laughs> if you could, don't stop. Uh, like a kitten also has a wonderful V Day box as well. Well, it's the build your own box, but you will find out more. And they are a lovely sponsor, and we love their box because well, we love boxes, and we both received one for this, and that's maybe something you and I will do together after we. Uh, Mac that pie. Milk bar pie. Yeah. All right. Time for a sex question. Let's Chippo. do we're it. We're keeping our intros shorter. short and sweet. All right. So I really dig this sex question. You will find out a little more why. And I w- I'm curious if you can relate, Chip, but maybe not. I am curious as to your opinion on a reaction I received from performing cunnilingus on a partner that will tense her legs together and pull me, she will pull me up for immediate vaginal penetration. With your combined knowledge, can you let me know if this is a vague sign of having had an orgasm or having stopped herself for further experiencing the sensations leading up to an orgasm? Totally done this many times. I crave when I am in my the height of my arousal, I crave penetration, which is strange because most of my orgasms happen from external stim, clitoral stimulation. There's something about cunnilingus oral uh, that really drives me to the next level. So I, I crave penetration, usually from a penis, from mm. a penis owner. I love that. And that is, it's like the animal instinct takes over. And I'm like, give me your cock So now. it's not necessarily that you're about to have an orgasm, you're overriding and you want the cock inside of you, but you're bypassing something. It's that you just crave the cock inside of you. It's something that I almost need the cock inside of me to, and it, it typically, obviously the body's different. It typically can trigger an orgasm after a while with the penetration, especially if there's a lot of uh, grinding because I need the external stem. So with this question, I don't know. It, it may be that or it may be you said you've also done something like that. So I've done it for multiple reasons. One is uh, so for me to have sex. And when I say sex, it's an umbrella term. So like oral sex is sex. Someone's go down in my pussy. I'm an energetic, and if you haven't listened to episode 126 with Jaya, and there's a little quiz on there uh, that you can do for free that will tell you what kind of how you feel your arousal and turn on your sexual connection. And an energetic person generally doesn't do well being disconnected from the energy of someone else to feel turned on and aroused. So when someone's going down me, first of all, I, I'm very complex. You know this, April. I'm a Rubik's Cube. Number one, I have a receiving barrier. I've had it since I was younger because the first couple people I had sex with did not go down on me. And so relaxing into oral sex is hard for me. Number two, I'm energetic. So to feel connected to you, I somehow need to really engage with you. And a lot of that has to do with eyes, words, um, kissing, some sort of connection. And I can do all kinds of things like doggy style sex. Yeah, I'll still turn around and look at you or I'll be looking somewhere at your body. Um, so yes, I've experienced I've experienced this where I will pull my partner up because I feel like I need more connection to actually feel more. I have also done it because I've just craved the cock inside of me. And I've also done it because it's been too much mm. and I actually don't want your mouth on my pussy anymore. Instead of saying something, I'm pulling you up. I've done all of these things. I have not expressed my partner or partners. Here's when they're happening at different times. So that's why I can see when I read this question, I was like, oh my God, this is so me. And I can see why you're confused because the questions this person is asking actually isn't exactly even what my experience is. Mine's even more complex. I have, I'm not saying that this is happening with this, with this situation. I have pulled people up before when I didn't really enjoy what was going on. Where I'm like, way of like, let's switch it. Yes, yeah. because I wasn't going to say anything at the in that moment that would turn the situation off. That is an actually a good perspective. Totally. To so, give. and have you watched um, Gwyneth Paltrow's Sex, Love, and Goop on Netflix? 
yet. It's like five five episodes. Yes, it's yes. not the one that Betty Dodson was in. Oh. It's the season after that. Oh, and Darshana's in it. Who's been in our podcast? Darshana oh, no. Avila. I guess I haven't, which is weird because I definitely should. So it, they actually have. So they're working with five different couples with five different sex and relationship coaches or sexological body workers and therapists. It's fucking beautiful, by the way. I honestly like some of the sex questions I get. I get like just go watch that. And oh. it will help you. But there's a couple there and there is a vulva owner, a female identifying vulva owner woman who um, braces every time she's about to be touched on her v- vagina mm-hmm. or, well, her vulva because no one's inside yet, but especially if someone goes inside. And uh, it's not Darshan I'm working with, it's Jaya's working with her actually. And sh- Jaya's like, so the minute, you know, the hand goes there, she feels like her body tense and the legs tense. Nothing feels good when you're super tense like that. Like it, it, it's usually like your body is now clamping down. And so there's not this relaxation for, and then the blood stops flowing. Um, and they, Jaya asks her, she's like, this is, or says like, this is because of like the speculums that have gone on you and the tampons mm-hmm. and the partners you've had that have just touched you without you saying anything. And I was like, oh my God, that's so me a lot of the time where my body's like just bracing to protect itself, but I can't just unthink it with my brain i need a lot more to undo that and i honestly just probably need to to speak to it whether i know it's just because i want a cock inside of me or i'm bracing because my body's too tense and i want something different or you know like all the reasons why i i i think i could use to speak to it so for this person this would be i would suggest um the person receiving or the person asking the question asking the question because they're the one asking um, to start up a conversation, hey, I this happens. I notice this, and I don't. I love pleasuring your pussy, and I don't want to make you. You know, there's nothing wrong. And I'm curious what's happening for you when that happens. When you pull me close, is it because you really want your cock inside of me? Do you need me closer so you can connect with me? Is it because things are feeling like too much and you're trying to switch it up? Because I listen to this podcast and these were the suggestions. And also, here's a, a season thing on Netflix that we can watch to learn some things. Oh. Wow, yeah, that's good advice. Yeah, I mean, I, I when I read that, I was like, oh my god, reflection on my own work. So there's so many interpretations for for things, especially yeah. when one of the per, one of the people in question hasn't asked the yeah, question. We don't know, so with, we don't yeah. know. So that I, I like the. I'm I'm also going to watch the Gwyneth Paltrow it's, situation. It's like it's really really good. Like they're yeah, it's so good. And you know yeah. me and my crime shows. That's all I watch. Oh uh, yeah, this is what I what I put on when I really want to like pay attention, and learn something, and. You know, for you and I, we learn about sex all the time. So I just watch Euphoria to learn about teenagers and drugs these days. Did you see the recent episode? Uh, yeah, I've seen all We're of them. We're not even going to go in there. No, no. That bummed me the fuck out. Oh, Did my God. I was like, stop. Shout out to Z- Zendaya's uh, incredible I, I had to turn the other way. Okay, anyways, we're moving on. Yeah, We're at yeah. 12 minutes. Shit. Oh, <laughs> damn it. All right, let's let's do a bio. Great advice. Thank you, listener, for that question. And we hope that you have some conversations and that can lead to a a general conclusion about that situation okay short bio short bio dr patty Britton has over 40 years of expertise as a clinical sexologist author and sex coach patty teaches professionals keys for helping their own clients patients students find solutions to their sexual roadblocks. She is an entrepreneurial wizard who shares insights on how to create a thriving private practice, one that is anchored on a commitment to service. She is a true spirit of generosity and has a drive to manifest social change for a sexually healthy world. To learn more, go to sexcoachu, that's sexcoachletteru.com. All right, everyone, here we are. It is episode time, and we are here today with Dr. Patty Britton. Did I say it right? Like Britain, like Great Britain, uh, who I've actually known of for many years. Uh, back in the day when I decided I would get into the sex and relationship coaching field, I did my research beforehand before taking a training, and I got her book. I believe it's called The Art of Sex Coaching, um, and I could be wrong, and she'll correct us in a moment. And I read it from front to back, highlighted all the things, and then and I was like, maybe I could just do this and become a sex coach. And then I was like, no, I need to go take a training. You can't just read a book and become a sex coach. Uh, so anyways, this episode, I'm really excited to learn more. And it isn't just about sex coaching, although Patty will share about how to become a sex coach. She has a program that actually teaches people how to do that. Um, and we're also going to talk about some of the key issues that come up for folks in intimacy and relationships that Patty sees, Dr. Patty, in her practice. So before we dive into that piece, Patty, can you tell our listeners how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality? 
Oh, thank you for asking that. And thank you for talking about the book because, you know, it's so strange. Even today, it was published years ago. It's still the only training manual on sex coaching. It's actually the only book per se on sex coaching. And I think that the beginning of how sex coaching was born as a profession was I had just finished earning my doctorate at the Institute in San Francisco. And I had a certificate as a sex therapist and I was a sex educator and I didn't like it. I thought, you know, it's so negative. (laughs) And I had just fallen in love with Thomas Leonard's work at Coach U. And I was a devotee living in New York City, and I had a buddy who was my coaching buddy. And I went, what if I married sexology with coaching and established a new way of working with the client that was just so positive, so much more fun, so much more collaborative? And that's really how it began in 1993. And it's just been thriving and growing ever since, as you know. Mm -hmm. So you really are a true pioneer of sex coaching. You and I love how you talk about marrying and being in love with and you weren't referring to any humans. You were talking about the (laughs) concepts. I was like, oh, she fell in love with. Oh, no, she fell in love with his work. And so that was really that was cool. I was uh, you're you're a natural at at this world, uh, obviously. So we're so excited. And I am not as familiar with your work. So this interview is going to be really special for me to learn more about you, too, and all of your offerings. Okay, so because you're a pioneer of sex coaching, you are probably really familiar with some of the top issues people face, especially when it comes to intimacy, relationships. So in your experience, why do these things happen so frequently in in terms of intimacy and relationships, the issues within? Oh, we could say so many things to answer that question, including the context in which we operate as humans. If we look at the shaming, and I love that, the name of this podcast and what you're doing is about de-shaming. It's shameless sex, and it's also shameless being as humans. And I think that because we live in a society that is still so puritanical and so divided... And we also don't have accurate information and and a guide. You can Google anything. Go to Dr. Google if you have any question, right? (laughs) And at the same time, Dr. Google doesn't always give you accurate answers. And what I found is that when clients come to me, they've often Googled around and they've also tried everything that they can do on their own. And they really need somebody to kind of hold that bar high for them. Like you can do this guys. And so there's something so beautiful about creating a relationship with clients that allows them to become who they really want to be and can be as sexual persons. And I also think that we look at relationships over time. And I know you talk a lot about this on this podcast. The number one issue that I think most of us see is the sexless relationship. And I see people who have been together for years and years, and sometimes they only come to me when they're almost DOA, dead on arrival. They, they think I have a magic wand and I'm going to wave it and I'm going to fix what's broken. And there's so many layers to what creates a sexless relationship. And we have to begin to kind of peel those layers away. And I give coaching action steps for people to move forward toward reconnection. Sometimes it's really about feeling like you deserve pleasure. Sometimes it's about bad communication. Sometimes it's just being clueless about how sex works. I see that a lot. Or it's this idealization of what sex should be like, because everybody thinks that everybody else is having a better sexual experience, (laughs) which is not true. So, you know, a lot of the things that we do as sex coaches and clinical sexologists, which I am, and I also train my students to become, is really about giving permission for people to be fully realized as sexual persons. And to get the clutter out of the way, (laughs) it's really a decluttering process. 
Mm. Yeah, I'll just speak as someone who's been a client of, of many sex therapists, sex coaches, and as well as traditional therapists. Wow, do I have a lot of layers into this onion of Amy. And and I, yeah. you know, just just when I come in for the thing, like, here's my problem, I feel disconnected, my body, my libido's low. We uncover all these other pieces that are related to it. Um, and it's I think that this applies to most of us that a lot of people uh, they've had they've had that experience, or well, it, unless they haven't done the work, you know, they still think that their issue is kind of the, the surface level issue. So let's break down some of the top issues, and um, these are some of the top issues, I guess, that we've seen from our listeners and their sex questions. And we'll kind of list some top issues as categories, but also if you if you can kind of highlight just some ideas. I know that um, you know there's you could talk about this for twenty thousand hours, and you're retiring soon, so you don't have time to do that. <laughs> but just our listeners love just like a couple ideas some or tips. applicable tools and tips on how to work with them. So let's start with uh, penis issues. So specifically ejaculatory and erectile control issues. What would you say are some of the ways that you um, assist people in working with that? Well, first of all, uh, I think that it's really shocking that I, I love working with male clients, that most guys don't know that they have two phases to their orgasm. So that's step one, letting them understand that first is the orgasm, then there's ejaculation. And there's this magical moment in between where lots of control can happen and lots of pleasure can happen and lots of ecstasy is possible. So teaching men how their bodies work is really step one. And guys, understanding that <laughs> ejaculation does not come before your orgasm. And if you can learn to find that moment just before the point of no return, then you can regain control. I have a system that I use that I teach my guys called Back It Up. And through masturbation, they can actually learn what are the signs and signals that are going on in their body and also in their mind as they approach the point of no return. And then they can back it up and practice and practice and practice so that they don't really hit that hot zone just before the point of no return where ejaculation is inevitable. Also, I think the penis has a mind of its own. <laughs> I really do. And sometimes I, I use humor a lot with my clients. Sometimes I say to my male clients in particular, well, let's just go back to how you began. Most boys are born penis first and then the body comes out <laughs> because it feels that way to so many men that their penis really has a mind of its own and maybe runs their life. And so learning how to go, this is Michael Castleman's work, to go from local to global pleasure, to get out of just being genitally focused and feel pleasure in the whole body, and to learn to slow it down and to learn. I tell all of my clients, especially couples, you got to put the damn smartphone away. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we're so habituated, all of us, to these triggering responses when we hear a or a, a ping of any sound or even just visually on a smartphone, on our laptop, on our iPad. And it takes us away from being in the moment. So being able to be in the moment is actually the key for penis owners and also vulva owners, particularly penis owners. So I could say more, but why don't, why don't you ask me where, where I should go? Hmm. One thing I want to also back up what you back it up, not with the penis, but <laughs> this conversation, the do not disturb function. I am extremely ADHD diagnosed at a young age and the do not disturb function on the phone is what we, Amy and I have to use when we're recording podcasts. That could be your best friend these days. If you don't have that function, and she's a chip. Did just, you play it on do not disturb? I know. It? I'm like, <laughs> Amy, did you, you didn't do it. Cause her phone like does this whistle thing too. So it's super yeah. distracting just in life. So I, I love that. Put your smartphone down, put it away, put it under the couch if you don't want to do not disturb it, if you're afraid someone's going to call with an emergency. Uh, but I love that advice. That is super good. I wrote that one down. Okay, so what about missed ma mismatched libido and sexless relationships? You already mentioned how common that is. Well, I I've had clients who have been so mismatched that this was a heterosexual couple. She wanted sex the night before she got her period, so every 28 or 30 days, and he wanted sex four times a day. That kind of mismatch 
that's a really, really tough one to find a middle ground. And that's really what it's about. It's about that idea that we have to communicate, we have to negotiate, and then we have to agree and then we compromise. And that's a C word that a lot of individuals and couples in particular really don't want to hear. They think compromise is a negative, a loss. And in fact, it's not. I always coach my couples, let's look at this as though you're part of a team and not adversaries. So if we can work like a team, even like a business, I actually have my couples write (laughs) their contract for how they're going to run the corporation of their relationship. And that's really a fantastic additive to a relationship where you know what the boundaries are, what the agreements are, and you can keep going back to it. And it gets you out of being triggered, by the way, and really angry at each other. So this idea of mismatched libidos is trying to get people to work toward the middle and having communication skills to do that. We could spend hours talking about how to coach couples to communicate without being at war with each other, and I'm sure you have talked about that many times. But knowing how to be kind, knowing how to see ourselves as allies and not enemies, and really looking at the good of the relationship. So sometimes it means you do something as a gift to your partner, like sometimes not obligatory sex, that's a terrible thing, but sometimes sex as a gift. If we look at um, Betty Martin's work, The Wheel of Consent, I love her Wheel Mm, of Consent. I mean, I love it. Right, because when when you're in that position on her Wheel of Consent where you're actually allowing you can actually give a gift of your your body, your sex, to your partner or a partner, and it's okay to move toward the center even if you don't have desire. Because libido, and y- you know, women's desire, and we're now learning that men's desire as well, is not an automatic response. Women are not hanging on the edge, most of them, wanting sex. They're more responsive to sex. We can look at you know, being being able to say yes to sex and being able to receive pleasure as well as to give pleasure. There's a whole continuum of how libido works. Mm. I am one of those women and who is like almost 100%, sometimes 95%, but just res- responsive. And very rarely do I walk down the street and just feel turned on by itself. Uh, we're like, <laughs> exactly. I'm, just really, I'm just really horny right now. It, it's, like, it's super rare. And so it's very much co-created or solo created just with myself, um, which brings me, this is just a side note question to the libido thing. And also, also the, to the penis issue thing, how often is masturbation the homework? Is that, is that common for a lot of these issues? Absolutely. You know, as a sexologist, I would never impose my values on a client. I would find out what the value system is for that client. And because I work globally, I have clients who come from very strict religious code, for example, where masturbation is forbidden. Most people are open to masturbation. Let's face it, it's the foundation for all partner sex, according to Kinsey, many, many, many years ago. And it's still valid. And that's how you find out who you are. That's how you find out how your sexual patterns work. So masturbation is always a key to partner sex. And masturbation is its own sexual experience, its own sexual outlet. And without masturbation, I don't know how guys in particular are going to learn how to have ejaculatory control and also how to enhance their ability to have and sustain their erections because they have to know their own bodies. And that's really how you master, uh, no pun intended, how you (laughs) master making love or having sex or fucking somebody else, depending on the language that you use. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it goes with our next prompt that April and I were going to share uh, about orgasm challenges. And I think we often hear about this, like people who are struggling having an orgasm is what I'm talking about. So for vulva owners, they would just kind of describe it as I can't have an orgasm, but there is such a thing as delayed ejaculation for penis owners. I think when we propose this prompt, it was more so for vulva owners because that's what we see on our end. It is more common, but it's not that delayed ejaculation doesn't exist. But what about the tools for that one? I bet masturbation is a big part of it. (laughs) 
Well, one of the one of the fun things that happened in my career is that I was very very close friends with Betty Dodson, and years ago. In Rest in power, <laughs> Betty. Yes, our darling Betty. And and years ago in New York City, um, we actually opened up a program called Shaft. This should amuse you. you. Um, sexual health and fitness training and advertised it in some holistic magazine. We had so much fun because she was doing orgasm-directed coaching. And it was part of the inspiration for sex coaching. I think that a lot of women don't feel they deserve time to experience their orgasm. That's one of the big issues for for vulva owners. And I think also not knowing what you want and not knowing what your body needs and your mind. Because my system is a five-part holistic system called the Meebs signature system. That was going to be a question. I'm glad you're going into that. (laughs) (laughs) Which is really, you know, when I work with a client or I teach someone how to work with clients through Sex Coach You, I always teach the Meebs system because you have to really open up what are you thinking? What's in the mind? M is for mind. E is for emotions. B is for body, which includes body image and behaviors. E is for energy and S is for spirit. And what I do is I actually get an assessment of every client and look at their M-E-B-E-S. What's blocking you, I say. And so we look at that and then we, over time, unpack what are action steps that you can take so that you can be in flow. It's all about being free and in flow. And what I find is that for many women, they either feel shame, particularly about their bodies. The body image issue for females is really strong. It's really what shuts down a lot of women. They hate what they see in the mirror. They hate how they taste, how they smell. They're worried about being judged. They're worried about uh, being rejected. And so what happens is energetically, they contract. And when you contract, I don't mean a contraction as an orgasm, I mean energetically contracting. And what that is doing is it's actually prohibiting you from having the energy flow so that you can actually have an orgasm. Because guess what an orgasm is? It's letting go. (laughs) And, And it's, you know, it's funny thing. You have to build tension, first be relaxed, then build tension in order to let go. And it's something that really isn't natural. Sometimes we actually need to be taught or shown how to open that up in ourselves. That's why we love Betty so much. <laughs> she was really uh, the mother We were of supposed all that. to do an in-person workshop with her. Really? Oh. really? It was delayed. It was canceled because of, COVID. of the pandemic. She, she passed only a month or two and then later, she right? she passed yeah. right after that. We were, so, we we were, were signed up it almost was, a year in advance. We it signed was, up. Yeah, we signed up a year in advance. We're like, we have to do this. It's be super uh, edgy. We're like, oh, we're going to be getting naked around a whole bunch of people and showing off our, yeah. our pussies and, and talking, yeah. like, here's my pussy and then masturbating together. And, exactly. and um, yeah, we didn't get to do it, but yeah, maybe we'll see what we'll yeah. do with Carlin. Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast is free to you because of our incredible sponsors like Everlywell. We always talk about how important it is to make sexual pleasure a top priority, and knowing your STD status can give you powerful peace of mind that can protect you and your partners. Everlywell at home lab tests give you physician reviewed results and personalized insights so you can take action on your health and wellness. I recently needed some STD peace of mind, so I took Everlywell's STD test, which checks for seven sexually transmitted infections that could harm you if left undiagnosed. I shipped my sample with a prepaid shipping label and received results within days. It was so easy and I never had to step foot inside the doctor's office. How's that for shameless screening? Everlywell offers over 30 tests so you can get informed about you, from food sensitivity to metabolism to thyroid and women's health. And for listeners of the show, Everlywell is offering a special discount of 20% off at-home lab tests at everlywell.com slash shameless. That's everlywell.com slash shameless for 20% off your at-home lab tests. Everlywell.com slash shameless. Go make you the priority now. 
This podcast is free to you because of another one of our amazing sponsors, Like a Kitten. Valentine's Day has come and gone. Did you step up your love game by spicing things up this year? If not, have no fear because Like a Kitten is here to add some erotic newness into your bedroom game. It's not too late to order their BYOB, aka build your own box with all your sexy essentials. You get to choose one item out of each of their six categories, toys, beauty products, lubes, games, sexy accessories, and lingerie. Within each category, you have eight or more products you can choose from. So you can find an experience that's customized just for your specific desires. I chose the CBD chocolate body paint, the Like a Kitten multifunction vibrator, an adorable black fleece robe, and so much more. What's amazing is that the box only costs $79, and some of the vibrators alone retail for $79. So the entire box of six gifts is a steal. And right now, Like a Kitten is offering our our listeners 20% off and free shipping when you go to likeakitten.com slash shameless or enter code shameless at checkout. Surprise your partner with an amazing Valentine couples box. Just go to likeakitten.com slash shameless or use code shameless to get 20% off likeakitten.com slash shameless. The link is in the episode's description. All right, back to the interview. Patty, Dr. Britton, excuse Dr. me, Britton. I should say the full thing. Oh, you Do can you call have... me. You can call me Patty. Oh, um, I feel so special. <laughs> Do you have, so for the body image issue thing, I just want to touch on that lightly because that is a really deep and triggering topic for some folks because it can happen any time in your life. You may feel really good about your body at one point in your life and then you shift age or, or th- stress, different things trigger you to not love yourself the way that you did or maybe you're a person that just never had you don't know what are are there any applicable quick tips that uh, could could be applied to some folks is it just getting therapy or working with folks or is it mirror gazing at your body or uh, any, any quick suggestions there oh I love that question you, you know it, it's funny I'm thinking back to an event that I co-led with Betty funny it's brought me right back into it it was at Omega Institute for the Healing Arts or something in upstate New York and we had 44 women naked in a room for a weekend buzzing with Hitachis and cords all over the room and one of the women had the scarring from a double mastectomy and it was such a powerful experience for her and for us to see the breakthrough to get to self-love. And that really, that really is a message that I promote. And I think that accidents can happen. Aging, we could talk for days about aging because that's my specialty. <laughs> and, and I'm in that cohort. But really, some of the silliest and most benign things can set you down a rabbit hole of self-loathing, right? Of hatred of what you see in the mirror or what you see when you do your, <laughs> you bend over in yoga and you go, hey, no, this is my joke. Whose legs are those? <laughs> that couldn't be my skin. But anyway, I, I think we have to reverse all that negative self-talk. And one of the ways to do that is the classic mirror exercise. I actually train people in, I have an international training that I do pre-COVID once a year for six days. It's a Heal the Healer event. And that is where we really dive in. And having people look at themselves in the mirror and being prompted to actually look for the good, starting at the top of your head and going all the way down your body in a full length mirror, naked or in underwear or bikini and finding the good and anchoring into the good. We have to learn to do that. I also think that everybody has how you find your sexy, you know, sexy. I used to teach this course at iVillage millions of years ago. Sexy is an inside job. And we have a way that we can anchor into or tap into what makes me feel sexy. You know, is it, uh, is it wearing a long luscious robe with faux fur around it? Not something totally revealing, but something that really evokes our sensuousness, our sensual nature? Or is it something that we can say or opening up all of our senses so that we realize that our body is more than just that mirror image? Does that help? Totally. And I have a, t- another tangent e-question just on, but on yeah. that note, I feel like I've, it's a lot easier. The idea of sexy 
um, vulva owning individuals, especially who identify with being, you know, in their feminine side or they identify as women, uh, sexy is something where they're like, oh yeah, sexy. And not uh, not everyone that identifies as woman or female knows how to be in their sexy. And so it's, I'm not saying exactly. that they don't have challenges. I'm one on of those own. people. Remember when we did that class, yeah. the stripper class? I was like, I'm walking around like a bull fast. in a china yeah. shop. I was like, I don't know how to do this. But, anyway, but I'm like, just, it was know, funny. We all have our own versions. What I'm, he- I'm hearing you say, and yeah, so yeah, April's a great example. And actually, we have another mutual friend who, uh, the, our friend who has a lot of fucking sex, like the horniest bitch ever, and <laughs> also doesn't really feel as like a super sexy person. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess it'll be a two part question about that. But I, my, my question was more about penis owners, though, oh, because yeah. when we talk about sexy, penis owners, like they, they don't really have like a great category for that for, for sexy because this is like, am I a man here? Do I grunt? You know, what do I do? Um, and Cock swing? Yeah. Do I swing my <laughs> dick around? <laughs> so like, I guess that's the question for you. Like, do you ever work with people on that? And, and what is your, how do, would that apply to penis owning folks who identify as man, male or masculine? I think for penis owners, it's more about what's your turn on. And it could even be what's your kink. Because I was thinking about what you're asking in terms of sexy. You know, it's not necessarily the black lace um, boudoir attire or negligee, which we don't even, you know, talk about in our current culture. But it could be something that is much more in the BDSM realm. It could be something that's, you know, a bondage gear or something that, is really playing outside the comfort zone so that people open up. Because excitement, we know, is part of what opens up the dopamine response in the brain, which makes us feel turned on and excited. And it's part of what often is the the cause of sexless relationships, because it's same stuff, different day. And so changing it up is part of it. I, I I don't know that in my Wow. Over 40 years of working with males, females, couples of any orientation or identity that a male, a penis owner has said to me, how do I find my sexy? I think he's more about how do I, well, first of all, as a sexologist who works with clients, we find the people who come to us are people who are the unhappy campers or they wouldn't be coming to us. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so the happy campers are doing all kinds of wonderful things for, you know, with, without problems. It's for two really, years and then they're your client. <laughs> and, then they're, and after five years, you know, they yeah. come to me. But really, I think it's more about what's a turn on and how do I stay turned on? Because I think that that's part of the misunderstanding that there's desire And then there's arousal. (laughs) And then there's how do I sustain that arousal? And especially if there's, I'm going to come back to shame. If there's shame about what's my fantasy, if there's shame about what really gets me going, if there's shame about what makes me really feel sexy, you know, maybe it's putting on girlfriend's underwear that may make the penis owner feel sexy. I've certainly had clients like that, which I love. And maybe it's um, wearing something rather than taking something off. (laughs) And, you know, going in that direction, I think that's one of the mistakes that couples make in particular is thinking that everything has to be pushing toward naked. And in fact, the eroticism is often much hotter (laughs) than the naked time. Mm -hmm. And so sexy, it's funny, I have a client, I have a young couple, well, they're not so young anymore. I've worked with her for three years, and now he's in the picture, and they just got married. And they finally have taken my coaching, and once a week, they have what they call sexy time. Hmm. And sexy time is their, their secret code for let's do it. Let's make time for us in a sexy way. And it means making time for sex. And I think that's part of what creates a lot of the problems and breakdowns in relationships is that sex is always at the end of the serving line. It's always at the end of the to-do list, you know, just after uh, the Tonight Show is over. And it's like, oh, fuck, we haven't had, we haven't fucked. (laughs) And now I'm too tired. And now I'm too tired. And, Mm. oh, we have to do it. And, oh, I don't like it that way, et cetera. So making time for sex, making time for us is so important. And, And also I think that, Great sex begets great sex. That sex 
that is working is really part of the formula for feeling sexy. And so doing it is often what allows you to want to do it more. So I think that's really a, a secret that we don't talk about enough. Yeah. That's like the, from the movie 40-year-old version, which I tend to <laughs> quote often, where he's like, excuse me, if you don't use it, do you lose it? And you're like, I love that movie. It's tr- I know, me too. Every time I think about that. That's where, awesome. And it's true. Yeah. I, and I really believe, and I am a, a pretty... I, I feel like sexual person. Amy always says that I'm DTF and we've had a, a sexological is. body worker even tell me that I was and that she's like a Rubik's cube. And <laughs> it's true. And, 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 and a, in a nice way. And, it, and it's true. <laughs> However, sometimes if I go through bouts of not having any sort of sex or masturbation and not getting my arousal flowing, I do fall into a sexual rut where I, it's hard for me to get turned on. Even when I watch scenes from a movie that you that I n- know would have turned turned me on when I was it's like active. crickets. Yeah. I'm like, what's going on? Is this thing on? I'm like tapping it like my microphone. I'm like, come on. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah if, if it's, it's, I love that advice. You have to just, it's a practice like everything else. So I like also the, the sexy time. I always do this voice. Like, do you want to make sexy? <laughs> that's what you say. That's what I say. Do you want to make sexy? Oh my God. That's awesome. <laughs> that's anyway. Oh, that's cute. Well, let me tell you, uh, it's funny you should say that because this this particular client is is a really a representative of something that happens in couples' real lives, any kind of couple, and that is laughing during sex, humor during sex. And you know what? It cuts it off. It's a total shutdown. And it doesn't mean we can't be playful because sex should be playful. It should be for pleasure and many other things. It's that when we're laughing during sex and we're building this energetic path that is escalating up and up and up, when we laugh, we break it. And so I coach couples sometimes, you know, it's not where you do your stand up act, <laughs> as in comedy, <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and keep, keep the joking away from in the middle of building arousal to orgasm, save it for another time. And so I, I, you know, this is where my model of Meebs comes in, where energy plays such an important role. Where's the energy flowing? Where's the energy going? Where's the energy in terms of what's happening within my own body and what's happening with my partner's body? We have to be in that flow. We have to be connective. And laughter is really like taking a sharp knife and going, boom, stop. So uh, I know that sounds confusing in a way because being playful is important. It's a way to lighten up. Well, there's a difference between being playful and then like cracking jokes because I'm uncomfortable. You know, if I'm just like, you know, and I, and I've seen that I've actually in in the last number of years seen like when I wear these masks and there's like the playful Amy is like, like my little kid Amy is like naturally playful. And there's like baby Amy, baby Amy. (laughs) And she's fun and playful and silly. Who's not who you you don't want usually want to have sex with her, by the way, but but there, but, and then there's like adult Amy who's playful, but it's a little more like teasy and silly. And and I, and my, one of my um, kink identities is the brat. I really, take on the brat like the other day I was getting tied up and I I I tricked my partner into thinking that uh, I wanted him to focus on my pussy while I was getting out of the knots of the ropes because I'm a brat you know I got to get out of there and be in charge but I don't really want to be in charge she chucked a toilet paper roll at my head the other day (laughs) full speed I did (laughs) but there's also the sarcastic Amy that's afraid of deep connection that will crack jokes when it's unnecessary and when if I do that during sex yeah that's a different thing and yes I I hear what you're saying Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast is free to you because of our amazing sponsors like UberLube. UberLube is a luxurious silicone lubricant that can enhance your sex and intimacy. UberLube's unique formula is velvety, long-lasting, with no flavor or scent, and it feels absolutely incredible on the body. There are thousands of doctors recommending UberLube to their patients because it's less likely to throw off your pH than most other lubes. So whether you want to make your hot sex even hotter or you want to prevent dryness, take our advice and check out our favorite go-to, UberLube. UberLube isn't just for sex. I use it for massage, to tame my frizzy hair, to prevent chafing, even for oral sex sessions. I love how it comes in a beautiful bottle with a pump top for easy access, appearing more like a cosmetic product so you can leave it on your nightstand shamelessly. 
Uber Lube is without a doubt my favorite lube, and countless listeners agree, often stating, we never knew lube could be this good. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. Again, that's uberlube.com, use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. This podcast was also made possible by OMGS.com. OMGS combines scientific research of real Volvo owners so you can learn shame-free techniques on how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied 20,000 plus people of all ages and turned the research into animated modules, short videos, and beautiful infographics that are tasteful and easy to understand. Whether you want to learn about external pleasure, internal stimulation, or techniques with toys, OMGS can help you master vulva pleasure. Let me tell you, I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and it's been changing their lives because knowledge really can activate your pleasure power. OMGS is for anyone who cares about vulva pleasure and wants to take it to the next level. OMGS can help you become a sexual strategist by equipping you with the tools you need to unlock your pleasure potential. Plus, your OMGS purchase helps fund more pleasure research. OMG, that's great. Only pay once and these techniques are yours forever. That's right. This is not a subscription service and you don't need to download a thing. So go to omgs.com slash shameless to get 10% off when you purchase any OMGS season. Again, go to omgs.com slash shameless to get 10% off right now. Time to pursue your pleasure. And now back to the show. I'm so interested in, you're talking about working with clients here. If you could just elaborate a little bit just about the approach, like what, uh, you know, a session might look like, and we have to paint the whole picture, but just give our listeners an idea of what would that look like, whether they're single or individual couple, how do you work with them? Well, we always begin with a check-in, a, a kind of weather report. If I'm just meeting someone, we get to know each other, of course, and then I do a very comprehensive assessment of who they are, where they're at. I have some really fun forms that I've created, like what might be your spirit animal all the way from that to what was your last testosterone report. And I also feel that the client sets the path. The client has to find a way to articulate their goals. Where do you want to, where do you want to get to? Where are we going? And I always bring them back to their goals, especially if there's an emotional event that occurs along the way. And it's really a dialogue that is asking the client what's working, what's not working, and then how do we intervene? And the end of every session, it, I run 60-minute sessions. They're, of course, now all on Zoom, unfortunately. And I end every session by asking the client, what are you taking away from this? What's the biggest aha? And that's a way of bringing your mind back in, especially if you've gone down an emotional path. And, and we move the client over time. It's never a one-time event. <laughs> it takes time. It takes time if you've been in a relationship for many, many years to really uh, decompress take a look at the relationship. You have a guide. You have somebody objective. You have somebody facilitating. You have somebody walking down this road with you. And it's a very loving experience. It's a very um, caring, protective in some ways, but also uh, empowering experience for clients. And I work with clients, I, I specialize in working, I love working with the 40-year-old virgins, for example. <laughs> <laughs> They're one of my absolutely, absolutely favorite <laughs> client types. And I often uh, engage a uh, surrogate partner therapist to work with that person because they need to have physical experience. And oh, I have, can I yeah. ask you about that? Is that easy yeah. to find? Like if someone doesn't, so say someone lives like, you know, out, you know, two hours from Atlanta, Georgia, um, like one, the, it's such a tangent, but I, but I've actually talked to people where I'm in my mind, I'm like, you need to experience uh, you know, connected, authentic, yes. consensual sexual touch to overcome this, this piece. Yeah. How easy, like you can, le so you can legally send them referrals for surrogates and how easy are surrogates to find? And will you, will you explain to yeah, what, me, yeah. uh, because I am unfamiliar and I'm sure listeners out there may be unfamiliar with, I know surrogacy and pregnancy. I don't know what you're talking about here. 
Oh, okay. So a surrogate partner therapist or an SPT is someone who should be trained and certified, who can be, in a way, a substitute partner. And it's not just about sex. In fact, some of them don't even engage in sex as we think of it. There's no sexual penetration. What it is, is it's someone who can allow the client to discover who they are. Often these clients are penis owners. And to allow them to open up to feel their bodies, to feel pleasure, to learn how to touch, to learn how to communicate, and to be with another live human person whose role it is to be of service to the client. It is not an exchange. No one is taking in that relationship. It is all for the client. And it usually is a very long, intensive process. Uh, Sometimes it's over many weeks. Sometimes, like, I facilitate intensives. I've had clients who will come for a weekend, for example, and work with an SPT who happens to be in the region that I live in. And there are other people who will fly to you. You know, it can be very time consuming and very expensive and often life changing. Does that help? That helps yeah. me completely. And Amy was asking if it's difficult to find those folks or if, if there's... Yeah, is there like... like you, you legalities know, involved? Yeah, legal, in- like legalities because there's like the whole idea of, you know, so if you're a coach and you're trying to help someone find a surrogate, does, you know, the idea of sex work, is that now like you're pandering or is is it something... I I understand surrogacy is a legal area, um, but like how, how does someone... Like, so say someone's listening, they're like, I need a sexual surrogate. How do they go about that route? So uh, there are a couple of websites they can go to. There's the International Professional Surrogates Association, and there also are other associations that have directories of people who are certified. Again, certified, not somebody who says, oh, yeah, I do this. And um, there are practitioners who work in what we call the somatic arts. Those are the, the arts, meaning healing arts, that affect and involve the body. And the Institute for Mind-Body Medicine is one of them. They also train people to work at different levels, whether it's a person who's a cuddleist, for example, because we need human touch Mm. to thrive, I'm telling you all. And those of us who may be alone, and it's all of us as the human family, need to find ways to get our touch needs met, whether it's through uh, going to... uh, a party, which of course with COVID, <laughs> there hasn't been much going on anywhere. You know, going to a party online is not the same as being touched physically. Um, and this, the surrogate partner therapy realm is one that isn't for everyone. So there's a very, very thorough application and evaluation process. Mm. I've only worked with penis owners who have qualified for that. And usually it means that I've worked with them for four or five sessions first to make sure that they're really a candidate for this. Mm -hmm. And because many of us, as we're a team, it's called the triadic approach. There's a clinician like me, there's the surrogate who does the touching. So I'm the talker, they're the toucher and the client. And it's a teamwork. It's a very collaborative process and very intensive. And that process really can happen in a weekend and can change a life totally change a life or it can happen over months and months and months of time. So anyone who's interested can write to me. I'm happy to answer questions about it. I'm so glad that's available. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll learn how to find you in at the end of the show here. Uh, And we're not done yet. Patty stay, stay with us. You're (laughs) such a wealth of knowledge. So you also train folks to become coaches all over the world. You have folks that (laughs) work uh, with you and and that have for years. So can you explain more about uh, your program? Yeah, um, actually, you, you you mentioned it a little bit earlier. Uh, this is my last enrollment, my last rodeo. I founded Sex Coach You with my partner, my belated partner, Dr. Robert Dunlap, uh, in 2010. And so we offer sexology and coaching integrated into a model that serves the client. That's what we're training people to do, is to work with the client as a sex coach, integrating that wonderful sexology with 
how we approach the client as coaches. And we also have a very, very intensive business success track. So there are three parts to this program at SexCoachU. That's the letter U.com. And um, I'm so proud because it, it was a little idea to bring my book alive. <laughs> when you're talking about the book. It's like, why don't we take the book and why don't we do a little online training? Okay. Well, now we're in 80 countries <laughs> and have trained... Uh, Gosh, with our current enrollment, over 350 people have been in the program, graduates or current students. And our sister organization is the World Association of Sex Coaches.org, which is also a membership and uh, has a directory of qualified people to help all of you who are listening. And it's just been my baby and such a privilege to train all these amazing professionals all around the world who share the vision that I have and the mission to be of service. That's really where we come from. We're of service, helping people heal, become whole, to have relationships that thrive with themselves and with their partners, however many partners they choose. And also to be a safe space for people to get the knowledge that's timely, accurate, up-to-date. We have the most amazing guest speakers at our webinars and it's just, it's, it's actually been so much fun for me, but I have other projects that I need to do. So I'm moving on. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're having a kind of one last hurrah, one last yeah. offering. And so the day this podcast goes out, that's February 15th of 2022. 2022. The enrollment starts that day. Uh, and we'll give, we'll have links in our show notes and I will have you share, or April will probably prompt this one to have you to share all your links and things. But before we do that, just a really quick uh, question from one of our listeners. So we have a discord uh, on the discord app and it's shameless sex fans and listeners who are, are all engaging with each other. And I told them that we were doing this episode with you and I asked if they had any questions and one of the questions that came through I thought was a really good one um, that I wanted to share. So one of the questions, just a quick question, um, is there a stigma around straight males being a sex and relationship coach? You know, it's a lot of other vulva owners or female or, or woman identified folks are sex and relationship coaches. I've met other sex and relationship coaches and, and therapists who are penis owners and identify as man and male. Um, and I do, I have heard of the stigma or the concern, especially with the Me Too movement, movement. But what do you see in your work? Like, is that welcome in your practice? Practice? Do you see a lot of them coming through to become a coach? I would say it's a great question. I would say that over 80% of my students and graduates are females, vulva owners, women, identified as women, including trans women, and that we need more males. We need more compassionate, caring males who can really create that conversation with clients. I myself have become more and more passionate about being a voice against the demonization of men. And I think we need to have men who can really be that, who can walk their talk and who can show up and be a, 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 a gentle, strong, yet caring voice for, for anyone who comes to them. And we, we have men who have graduated from the program who are really making a difference in the world. And I think that one of the things I'm going to say that may sound a little strange is that when I think about this organization, Sex Coach U, and its evolution over time and the quality of the people who have been trained and graduated from it and our team of the staff all around the world, one of the components of it is that in some funny way, what runs the engine is love. And there's such a caring, loving spirit of intention to help other people. It's, it's profound. It, it, it makes me cry sometimes. And so we need men who can show up in that way as well. And we always accept males into the program if they qualify. That's fantastic advice. And from a business perspective, I'll just shout out to those folks out there that are straight penis owners, or if you're not straight, it sounds like uh, from a, you could make more money because there's a lot more uh, female identified humans doing that work. So you have an up, mm -hmm. perhaps that's really cool, uh, right? Like a male nurse, mm -hmm. just saying. And I agree with that. And the business side is actually where I spend a lot more of my time than on the sexology and coaching side, because my passion is really to empower people 
It's great to know everything about sex. It's great to be a wonderful coach that can really open someone up and help them achieve their goals. But you have to know how to take care of yourself and sustain yourself. And that's why the business side is so important and so powerful. I want people who come to this program to thrive, to make a living at their calling. You're like an amalgamation of Amy and I, <laughs> just as one. Uh, I love it. You're our spirit animal. Well, wait, that's fun. Susan Bratton, but you can be our spirit animal too. Yes, we, <laughs> we can have multiple. Well, okay, so Dr. Uh, Patty Brighton, nope, Britton, yeah, just yeah, kidding. Nailed it. Why do I want to go Brighton? No, it's Britton, uh, just like the Brits. Uh, how can people find and work with you? I know that you are retiring, and congratulations on all of the beautiful things that you've imprinted onto the world Thank in you. your years in this field. And and I know you're still going to be doing things, but if uh, folks want to find your program or they want to find and work with you, how can they go about doing that? Thanks for asking that. Um, I, I am taking clients, only a very few. Most of them are, believe it or not, referred by their psychotherapist who's given up on being able to help them <laughs> and because uh, they have no draining or comfort with sexuality. And drpattybritton.com is my primary website, and there's a form there for people to fill out, to contact me, as well as a very thorough kind of explanation of how I work and what the Meebs model looks like in action. I think that's really important to take a look at the coaching page. And then I'm also still at sexcoachu.com, where I'll be until June 1 of 2023, I am the mother of sex coaching, and I will stay the mom of all my kids <laughs> until the time is right for me to move on. So um, I welcome Thanks, anybody. My pleasure. <laughs> the matriarch. Well, I mean, technically it's true. I mean, I read your book when I was a little little baby. So. <laughs> she was baby Amy. Yeah, I mean, you taught me so much. So anyways, all right, Aww. I digress. April, close it out with wonderful Dr. Patty Britton. Well, thank you, Patty Britton, for everything. This was such a special, it, 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 the entire interview I learned so much and your perspective on not only sex coaching but the world is really valuable and um, I feel so fortunate to be able to have this time with you and I know our listeners will feel the same so listeners out there I'm going to invite you right now go on iTunes so people can find folks like Dr. Patty Britton and their work and it helps more people just tune in and feel less shame in their sexuality in their lives but you need to give us five stars on iTunes that way we crawl up the chain more people find us it's their uh, algorithm don't ask me how that works if you work at apple you might be able to email us and tell us but just go ahead we read every single one of your reviews and we love each and every one of you thank you for being part of the shameless sex revolution we'll see you next tuesday ciao for now want to learn more go to shamelesssex.com and for 15 percent